Hey everyone, super excited to join you today for the FB Live this Tuesday evening. I know it's 6.30 p.m. Unlike the usual time when we talk at 5 p.m., but that's only because I'm calling you from America today. And in Scottsdale, where I am right now, um, you know, doing a course, uh, this is, I think, just about 6 a.m. It's really dark um, outside. Otherwise, I would have opened my window to show you what it looks like, but you can see it's really, really dark. So... I thought anyways let me log in and say a quick hello and you know talk to you guys since we always meet Tuesday evenings I didn't want you guys to be left um, without having to meet me today so uh, hi Vinod uh, lovely to see you all the people who are logging in thank you so much I know it's a change of timing and it may be difficult for you to log in at this time but thank you so much for being here with me today so that we can still continue our FB live Right, so we we'll give it a few seconds um, and let people log in as it is uh, because it's not our usual time. I'm sure when they see that I'm live, more people will join us. So let's just wait for 10 seconds for that and we'll get started right away into the topic of today, which is change the way you look at yourself. And, um, you know, it's hi, Vanshika, good to see you. Awesome, thank you so much for all of you who are here. We just give it another few seconds, just waiting for people who are not here so that we can. Hi, Maheshwari. Good to see you. Hi, Nikita. Hi, Rinku. How are you? I, I always look at your name and then I go Nikita and then it strikes me. No, it's Rinku. So um, good to see you here. And thank you so much for logging in on Tuesday evening. Uh, unlike the usual time, but since, uh, since we already have a good audience, let's get started right into the topic. And today's topic is change the way you look at yourself. And I want to tell you that, you know, one of the things that we all end up doing is beating ourselves down for what we have not been able to accomplish in the past. And if you really wanted to change our lives, any, and, you know, let me begin by asking you, how many of you would really like to change your life as far as money is concerned? Or uh, how many of you would like to change your life as far as your relationships is concerned? Or as far as your career is concerned? Or as far as your own connection to yourself is concerned? Or your relationships with your children, with your parents? Right now, all of us want something better in our lives, but um, especially in the area of finance and career. But if you do not, if you continue to look at yourself the way you have been looking at yourself in all these years up till now, chances are that you're going to achieve the same thing over and over again. There has to be some difference in the input before the output can change. And let me explain this to you. If you believe as a person that you have a potential of 10 on 10, okay, you have a potential on, of 10 on 10, what kind of action are you going to take based on that thinking? Are you going to take more action? Or are you going to take less action? Vis-a-vis -vis a person who believes that their potential is only five, right? So if a person believes their potential is high, chances are they will take more action. And when they take more action, the possibility or the probability of them getting the kind of results they want will be higher, right? Um, if somebody believes that, uh, you know, um, they do not have the right potential, what are they going to do? They're not going to take too much action. When they don't take too much action, they're not going to get the kind of results they, they wanted. And they're going to go back and feed into the belief that I do not have the potential for something. You do not know whether you have a potential for something or not unless you have tried it consistently with 100% effort over a long period of time, right? So it's very important to first, to begin with, put a 10 on your head. Say, I am 10 on 10 potential. And now let me go out and discover what I can achieve with that. Um, why is it that we find it so hard to put a 10 on 10? Is because we judge ourselves based on our past references or experiences. Now, the school education or the university education is designed to reward the people who are the quickest, who are the fastest, who are the smartest. But in life, it takes a little more than being quick, smart, and uh, first, it takes endurance. And a lot of average students who believe that they do not have it in them because they're not as smart, they're not as quick, 
definitely have endurance in them because they survived through the school, they managed through the bad grades, they did what they could to survive. So they have endurance. And that is the reason the people who don't necessarily do well at school do exceptionally well in life. So it's very important to keep that in mind that endurance is a beautiful skill to have. And if you have not done well in the traditional sense, you do have that skill and now you can use that to your advantage. The third thing to remember is whatever has happened in the past, has been left behind from this day onwards. It does not count. Even if you did well, it did not count. It does not count anymore. Even if you did bad, it does not count anymore. What counts is what are you gonna do the way forward from here? What are you gonna achieve in the next couple of weeks, next couple of months, next couple of years, right? So the rest is all history, right? Your past is not your future. And that statement holds true for people who have done well for themselves as well as for people who have not done, done well for themselves, right? Hi, Parvez, good to see you here. It's always nice to see my own coaches logging in and watching me um, live. Uh, thank you for being online with us, Parvez. Um, thank you. Um, Another thing that, you know, uh, basically forces us to think negatively about ourselves is what we have heard as a child. A lot of times our parents just in a spirit of encouraging us say many, many negative things to us, which may not, um, you know, be accurate or which may be nasty and which we may take very personally and we start believing it as an absolute truth. So let's say a parent says, you know, you got to get smarter, otherwise you're not going to get be successful in life or, you know, you got to get better grades, otherwise you're not going to be successful in life. And when we keep hearing that programming the negative programming all the time chances are that we, we believe that about ourselves that just because I didn't get good grades in school I'm not gonna do well in my life but as I said that's not true at all because when you did not get the good grades when you learned how to go through your failures when you learned to survive those you built the ability to endure and that is a necessary skill to succeed in life right so uh, very interesting um, uh, theory that you know we need to do something consciously about putting a 10 on our potential on our head is a book written by Dr. Shad Hemstetter in which he says that uh, you know um, an, a child between the ages of 0 to 18 hears the word no 148,000 times okay ye mat karo wo mat karo don't do this don't do that give it to me i will do it for you you know let your brother do it let your sister do it all of that drama right so a normal child between the ages of 0 to 18 hears the word no 148,000 times compared to hearing the word yes which is only 5,000 times. And um, that is a research done by Dr. Shad Hemstetter, which he writes about in his book, What You Say When You Talk to Yourself. Now, if you see the difference, 5,000 versus 1,48,000, what does that tell you? It tells you that you have been programmed to think negatively about things. You are going to notice the negative things faster than you're going to notice the positive things because that's how you have your brain has been programmed, right? So if you want to break away from the myth and you want to look at yourself differently, you got to do two things. And I'll leave you with these two tips today. First, you got to celebrate all wins, small, big, anything if there's any kind of progress you're making towards your goal that's a win as i said that if somebody wants to lose weight it's not going to happen overnight but if you're managing to get to the gym every day if you're managing managing to eat right every day that is a win and you got to celebrate that right and that's going to give you the motivation to go on going and that's going to give you the belief that you can make it happen for you right so celebrating every win is very important because your brain is always going to look at what's not right so you got to train it like how we do, um, you know, muscle training. We got to do some emotional training. We got to train your brain to look at things positively, one thing at a time. So every day, find a way to celebrate something that you have done that day and inspire yourself with your own actions and your own progress, right? The second thing you want to do to, uh, you know, change the way you look at yourself is to every week, try to do something which you believe at this point in time is out of your comfort zone. I'll explain that to you. A lot of times you would have noticed we have a lot of clothes in our wardrobe, but when we open the wardrobe, we tend to pick up the same two, three outfits and wear them again and again because we are comfortable with them. Even though we have bought everything that's there in the wardrobe, we will pick up those two, three favorite t-shirts, those denims, you know, those shoes, those jackets, and maybe even the jewelry if you're a woman. You know, you'll tend to pick up the same stuff and you keep wearing it over and over again because that's your comfort zone. You know, even on a bad day, it's comfortable for me to wear these clothes. So every single week 
I want to encourage you to challenge yourself to do something that you believe is not normal for you or it's not comfortable for you. Why are we doing that? Because that is going to help you expand yourself. So from the mini me, you're going to become the big me. And how you're going to do that is when every single day you're going to challenge yourself to do something differently. Maybe if you have coffee in the morning, try it out in the evening instead of the morning, try some tea, you know, just change a few habits. If you don't read a book, pick up the book to try to read it. Just do something something which you're not comfortable with and that'll help you change your whole self-concept over a period of time you know I never thought that I could read um, read books but then you know if I look look back in life now I've read close to 500 books till now I never thought that after I got out of college that I'll ever read a book right I never thought that I would wear uh, when I was in college I used to only wear salwar kameez I never thought that I'll ever wear western outfits but today I wear them right and I wear them comfortably now it does not mean that I don't wear a salwar comfortably or don't wear a sari comfortably but the idea is that you have expanded yourself to do things which you once believed you could not like I never thought that I could do weight training but I'd learn weight training right now and my coach Pervez is on online right now with me here and um, I never thought that I could uh, you know um, I could put makeup but you know I learned how to do that and that was so much out of my comfort zone because I just don't believe in wearing makeup but then you know it's a professional need so you got to wear it if you're on camera so you know that's something I learned so every person has if you just do things which you're not comfortable doing it helps you expand as a person and their brain generalizes that learning over many many other areas of your life and it just kind of opens up and um, you know changes your whole self-concept so these are the two tips I wanted to leave you with today um, as I said I'm very delighted I'm talking to you all the way from Scottsdale today I'm here for a program and uh, you know always uh, striving to get myself better and uh, you know because if a coach is not learning themselves then they can not help other people learn and grow as well so I believe in learning I believe in having my own coaches and you should get yours too and whatever I shared today in this video is there in my book so if you like to read it one more time or you want to understand it more deeply get my book the queen of the comeback it's available on amazon.in and at multiple stores across um, the metros which is Delhi Noida Bangalore Chennai and of course Mumbai um, right so grab your copies and uh, you know I'll be delighted to hear from you what what the book did for you what did you learn from it and all of that so that's all I wanted to share if anybody has any questions I'll be very happy to answer them right now um, before we end the call today but do let me know if there's anything you want to ask about this topic um, do write in your comments so that I know if you're watching this video later because I know I did it at an odd time today uh, you're welcome to write in your questions and in your in the comment section and I'll be delighted to get back to uh, with the answers to you within the next 48 hours even though I'm traveling I'd love to do that for you yeah so I'll wait on for a few seconds if anybody has anything to say if you want to make a comment on you know how this topic helped you or if you have a question I'll be very happy to answer So, oh, looks like everyone's pretty clear of what I shared today. So awesome. Uh, I just want to say have an awesome, awesome, awesome evening ahead. And I look forward to meeting you next Tuesday, same time. And of course, I'll be logging in again, as I said, from Scottsdale next week as well, because I'll be still here. So look forward to seeing you next Tuesday. Bye-bye, guys. Love you.